Christian Parenting. Trying harder to build a strong family isn't going to cut it. We need God's power in our homes. Join us as we talk about that today. Hi, my name is Ray Reno. Welcome to Family Vision with my parents, Dr. Rob and Amy Reno. Strengthening families through practical, encouraging, and real conversations. Family Vision is powered by the Christian Parenting Network. Hello, Rob Reno here with my bride, Amy. Hello. Welcome to Family Vision. Today and in our next episode, we're going to be talking about an essential practice for your family. I'll go so far as to say that you can't have the kind of family you want to have, the kind of family God wants you to have, without this. We're going to talk about family worship. And don't be um, intimidated by that phrase. Family worship really is just reading scripture, praying together. That is the basis of it. But we are going to get into this concept of family worship a little bit more specifically and how it transformed our family. Unfortunately, when we got married and started having children, this was not something we were doing. Now, Amy, you were doing this with the kids, but I was so focused at church that I was really neglecting being the spiritual leader at home. And in our first episode, I I shared about what God did in my life in 2004. We had been married for 10 years. We had four kids. And he really turned my heart to you and to the family. And when I share that story, the first question people ask me is, well, Rob, what changed? Like it's one thing, okay, you got convicted about this and and God turned your heart, but what actually changed in your life, in your family? And this, what we're talking about today, is what changed. We started regular, consistent, not perfect, far from it, family worship in our home, just praying as a family, reading the Bible together. And I would say I would say it's impossible to overstate how much God has changed our hearts and united our family by doing this. Yes, that's very true. And let me just talk about how I was first introduced to this idea of family worship. You might remember from our previous podcast that Rob and I were not like foreigners to the Christian world at all. We were both raised in the church and He had gone to a Christian college for both undergraduate and graduate school. I had gone for graduate school, and yet I'd never had heard this term family worship. And I started reading some books uh, probably when my oldest was about, I don't know, four years old. I started getting interested in homeschooling. I thought I might be homeschooling, and therefore I was picking up a lot of different type of books that I had not been introduced to before. And one of them kept talking about family worship. And I thought, wow, that's an interesting phrase. I didn't quite understand what it meant. But the thing that struck out to me in that book was the the um, author said that, you know, how much more powerful is it when our kids are not just worshiping 52 Sundays a year, but that they're worshiping in their home. And that still st- struck with me, like how much more they're learning, how much more are we worshiping God together as a family if it's just not um, – on Sundays. Right. And then what happened, I went to this conference called Hearts at Home by Jill Savage. Some of you might remember those conferences. And the point of her conference was really just to help moms kind of get a vision for what their ministry could be like at home, whether they were working or not, but just kind of elevating the home. And I ran into a speaker there. His name was Kirk Weaver. And he had this whole fantastic uh basically workshop on this concept of family worship. So here I was getting this again, and he was just, you know, he had all these fun ideas and showed videos of his family doing these activities together. And you can just imagine, Rob, you know, this room full of women, moms, right? right? All of us wishing that our husbands were there to hear this. you called me on the way home, (laughs) I think. think. I did, yeah. I mean, I was so taken back. So that was my exposure to this concept of family worship. Amy calls me, she's like, Rob, you need to hear this. (laughs) You know, you're going to love it. You know, because Amy had been, been, praying for me to catch this vision. And ultimately, you know, through her prayers and through family time, but this scripture from Deuteronomy 6, this great commandment, you know, it was very familiar to me, but I had really missed the the application section of it. Um, if you've been around church, you've probably heard it before. Deuteronomy 6, 5, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments I give to you today are to be upon your hearts. And then God speaks to parents and he speaks to grandparents. He says, teach them diligently to your children. 
And this call here in Deuteronomy 6, hey, if you want to love me, help the kids love me. If you want my word in your heart, help the kids have my word in their hearts. And then the next verse was this practical instruction that I had totally missed. It says, okay, teach them diligently to your children. But then specifically, it says, talk about them. The them there is the word of God. Talk about the word of God when you sit at home. So if if I was going to love God and I wanted to love God, If I was going to help my children love God, that started by opening his book at home with the family. And like I said before, this was a new concept to us. Again, we typically think of worship at church, correct? And I'm also familiar with the importance of personal worship, and that's something I talk about. I think it's important that we as individuals take time to worship the Lord. But I had not really heard of this concept of family worship, and it reminds me of Joshua in— Actually, in Joshua 24, when he says to the faith community, really, he's kind of telling, he's presenting choices, right, to the faith community. And he says, but if you refuse to serve the Lord, then choose today whom you will serve. Would you prefer the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates? Or will it be the gods of the Amorites in whose land you now live? But as for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. And I love this biblical illustration of this, because it's really Joshua laying down a line or a boundary. He's kind of admitting that I really can't control this whole community. I can't control who you're going to serve in your home, you know. But as for me and my family, we are going to choose to serve the Lord. I love the fact that we were given as a wedding gift um, a picture that's on our front. You know, you come into our house, it's right there. And it says, but as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. And then the Reno is written. That was one of the wedding gifts. And again, I feel like that's God's just little blessing. We didn't know how important this verse would be to us later. And it's on our front door or in our front entryway. It's not hanging on our front door. And we were both convicted too, just about what Christians had said about family worship down through the centuries. As Amy said, we're not like coming up with this new thing that Correct. families need to be in prayer and scripture in the home. This is throughout the Bible, but then also throughout Christian history. And we came across this quote from Charles Spurgeon, and he wrote this in 1880. And he really saw like our day coming. Like he saw the day coming when parents were delegating the spiritual training of their kids to the church. Uh, or to other people outside the home. So he wrote this. Now, it's pretty strong, so buckle up. Uh, We deeply want a revival of family religion. The Christian family was the bulwark of godliness in the days of the Puritans. But in these evil times, hundreds of families of so-called Christians have no family worship. Now, he's having a hard time believing that if you're a Christian family and you're not praying or reading the Bible at home, he's like, how can you even call yourself a a Christian family? Uh, He'd probably be pulling his hair out today with 5, 10, 15% of church-going families that have family prayer and have family Bible in the home. And here's what he says. This this, uh, quote convicted me so deeply. How can we hope to see the kingdom of our Lord advance when his own disciples do not teach his gospel to their own children? O Christian men and women, be thorough in what you know and do and teach. Let your families be trained in the fear of God and be yourselves holiness unto the Lord. And so shall you stand like a rock amid the surging waves of error and ungodliness which rage around us. That line, how can we hope to see the kingdom of our Lord advance when his own disciples do not teach his gospel to their own children, just convicted me so deeply. You know, and as parents, I think, you know, especially as a new parent, I I did not have a vision or a picture of how important my personal you know spiritual impact was going to be on our children and that that was going to be far more important what's happening in our home um, do you remember we used to have a phrase when we did youth ministry uh, that was uh, you know if you took a, ch- a kid who might be in a not so great school and might have a not so great youth right. group experience but came from a family that was really spiritually training, you know, that child very, you know, the the home was right. intact, that it was going to be okay. Like who we were in that kid's life really wasn't going to matter 
long term, right, that much. If they had that strong If they had that strong Christian home. And in contrast, if we had kids who had the best youth group, they might be in the best school and they might have wonderful people in their life but came from a real challenging home environment, that that was a lot to overcome. Not that that kid couldn't be okay. It's just that you really saw – you know, who we were in those kids' lives were was really, really significant so as, as youth right. pastors, you know. And again, it's just a way, a picture of understanding how important as parents our spiritual impact on our children. And uh, that always uh, sticks with me. Yeah, honey, talk about the difference. Sometimes we talk about the difference between family worship and family devotions. And granted, mm-hmm. these are just different terms people Correct. use for this. But I think it's been helpful the yes. way you differentiate. Yeah, it that that was something that that really I can't remember what speaker it was that spoke about the difference, but it did really con- convict me that there's a lot of times I do devotions with kids, meaning that I'll I take the book of Proverbs out and read that to the kids, and I'm really kind of teaching them what Proverbs mean. I read a Proverbs and I'm teaching it to them, and I kind of call that Bible devotions where parents are really using God's word to instruct their children. But family worship, the difference is, is is more like holding a Bible over the whole family, over you, over me, over the kids, as we come and just acknowledge that all of us are under the authority Mm -hmm. of God's word. And that's what worship is about. So that was a helpful distinction for me, that what we were doing in family worship versus me explaining Bible stories to my kids or explaining right. biblical principles. So it's not that we have it all together and we're helping Correct. the poor children who so desperately uh, need this Bible time. Right. One of the reasons why family worship is so powerful is that your your two most important relationships come together. So it's your your vertical relationship with God and your horizontal relationship with each other in your family. They In these few moments of family prayer and family Bible – those two relationships, vertical with God, horizontal with each other, they, they intersect. And so part of the heart and the spirit behind your family worship time is, Lord, this is a time where we want to come to you. We want to be right with you, and we want to be right with each other. I, I think in a lot of ways, it's more heart than head. It's more connection than knowledge. You know, one of the things people have asked us to do so many times over the years as we're doing visionary parenting conferences at churches is they've asked us, you know, you need to videotape your family worship time so that when you come into a seminar, you can put some clips up or put it on YouTube. (laughs) And we've, we've never done it. You know, part of it is like, look, we have our white robes on, the light is shining down from heaven. Um, <laughs> okay. Rob always makes that joke about that. <laughs> I probably stopped laughing at it a while ago. <laughs> but it's the absolute opposite of that. And the funny thing I always think when people say that, like, oh, to make a video of this, there's really nothing. One is there's not much to watch. I mean, who would really watch <laughs> that? I, I can't in, even a picture what that would actually look like. But the other thing that hit me when and we were asked that is I finally like, why, why is it hard that we don't do that? And I realized is it's too intimate. Family worship, uh, it, you know, dare I use the word sacrament, and that's more of a liturgical word, but I just mean that it's a, a time where we're being vulnerable with each other. We're being vulnerable in front of the Lord. They don't always have this, they're not always crazy emotional, right? Sometimes they're really messy and kids are, it's not a It's not a time. Yeah, sometimes you, it's stop biting your brother. Right, right, right. I mean, they're older now, so we're past those times. Well, but barely. Still, but still, um it's too intimate. So, you know, if you put a camera on that, it just changes it. All of a sudden you're trying to make a show for something else, and that's not what worship is about. So that's why we've never even tried to pursue that. Right. Hey, I want to go back to something you brought up a few minutes ago. You are talking about how, like, when it comes to worship, we think worship at church. That's mm-hmm. really important. And then you also brought up, like, private worship mm-hmm. that we pray, we tell the Lord how much we love him, mm-hmm. we spend time in his word, but that this family worship piece— and we're convinced that this lack of family worship in so many Christian homes is one of the reasons why so many in the last two generations have been spiritually malnourished. So you can think of these three 
worship environments as three meals that God wants every one of his children to have. God wants every one of his children to have a spiritual meal alone with him, Mm -hmm. talking to him in prayer and reading his book. God wants every one of his children to have a spiritual meal with the body of Christ and worshiping together as a church family. But there's a third meal, and it's this meal of family worship in the home. So you can imagine if a person only Mm -hmm. gets two meals, or for a lot of people, it's only one meal. It's mm-hmm. one meal on Sunday where they get it, and there's nothing the rest of the six days mm-hmm. a week. So if you have a vision and a passion to have your kids be spiritually strong in the Lord, part of our job as parents, help them get all three meals. Help them learn how to spend time alone with God. Help them connect with your church family, and then building in this essential practice of family worship in the home. And I just want to add to that, just you know, when you go to church and you worship with the people at your church, right, you're... You are worshiping God together, and that builds an intimacy and a connection with the people that you are worshiping with. That's why church families have that community. Well, similarly, in your family, when you're worshiping together, you are building intimacy and more relationship with your family members. And you know more about what's going on in each other's lives, and you know more about each other's struggles, just like you do at church. That's why that family worship piece, it's one of the reasons why that family right. worship piece is important. Yep. And it's never too early to start this. It's never too late to start this. I remember I was sharing uh, my testimony and these scriptures with a group at a church. And after I was done, one of the deacons at the church came up to me and said, he had two teenage girls. He said, Rob, we have never done family worship in our home. We prayed together and he felt so convicted. He said, I'm going to give it a shot tonight. So this would have been a Sunday morning. So it's this Sunday night. He's going to go home and try for the first time just to pull his family together for some prayer and to read the Bible. And he called me the next day. Turns out it was uh, 45 minutes. That's kind of on the the long side. But they prayed together. They read some scripture. They talked and it went great. I'll never forget what he told me that his daughters said to him after they had finished. They said, and they said it in in love, not in judgment, but they said, Dad, why'd you wait so long to do this? Mm-hmm. Why'd you wait so long to do this? And for him, again, see, a lot of us, maybe you say, well, I've never really done this before. I don't know how to get this started. It's okay. You just repent if the Lord's convicting you to take a, a baby step here toward more family prayer, toward more family scripture in your home. Never too early to start, never too late to start. And I, I think for some families— they say, well, we just need to discipline ourselves to, to do this. We need to do our family prayer. We need to do our family Bible reading. And I, I understand that. You know, I mean, the discipline is, is good, but the driver for this is not discipline. It's not mm-hmm. white knuckle. We need to get this scheduled. The driver that we found in our home is just neediness. Like our family, we need this. Mm-hmm. There's sin in our house every day. We are anxious about things. We need the spiritual meal of God's word. We need prayer. We need to be praying for others, for our church, for our nation. Mm -hmm. And just like you said about disciplining yourself, you wouldn't have that mindset like we need to discipline ourselves to go to church, discipline ourselves to go to church. If you have that, you can, you know, you really want the attitude of we want to go to church, right? As a, as a family, we want to go worship. And similarly, we want to do family worship and, we just don't want you to be all intimidated at all because it, you know, it's not something to be intimidated by. And next week, we are going to talk a lot more specifically about practical suggestions and just trying to help families um, start this practice of family worship in their homes. So be sure to join us next week, and we'd love to hear from you. You can email your questions about faith and family to podcast at visionaryfam.com. And as always, you can connect with us on any social media channel. Just search Visionary Family Ministries. And if you're one of our ministry partners who make this podcast possible through your generous support, we appreciate you so much. And you can learn more about supporting our ministry to families at visionaryfam.com donate. And we look forward to our next conversation with you on Family Vision. <music>